Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, depending on where you're at out there on this beautiful Tuesday, December 12, uh, 19th, 2023. It's about 11.54 a.m. here, California time. Uh, latest activity on the globe looks like a 1.6 in Alaska. Uh, we'll get to the earthquake activity here in just a minute. Uh, taking a live look here at the region north of Grindavik, Iceland. Of course, uh, I think the majority of us know that the eruption initiated yesterday. And uh, it is continuing, although it is dying down in certain areas. Uh, but still some beautiful pictures, beautiful video coming in there from the Iceland area. And uh, that's uh, something to watch, right? Uh, the latest information statement here from the Icelandic Met Office states that the uh, eruption is focused on five vents around the Fisher area. Uh, they're stating little activity at the southern end of the Fisher. That's good news for the folks there around Grindavik, but that doesn't mean they are completely out of the uh, potential danger. Uh, according to these folks here, the eruption continues to weaken. New aerial images of the area show that there are now three vents erupting southeast of this region here, down from the previous five. So this is a little bit older information up here. Uh, the lava has mostly flowed east from the eruption site, but there is also a lava tongue flowing west from the region north uh, of this area. So um, it's good that the lava is flowing to the east. That will be away from the power plant, away from the Blue Lagoon, but still too early to um, get too excited that this you know, may not affect those areas. Uh, since the eruption began, about 320 earthquakes uh, had been measured over the magma channels. The largest was at 4.1 from yesterday. Uh, there is a significant decrease in earthquake activity since midnight. Only 10 earthquakes have been recorded in the region. Uh, it looks like we had a 5 centimeter subsidence in the land um, around the Savart Singhi area uh, since this eruption. Uh, the land had, had been uh, rising there about 35 centimeters uh, since that formation of the magma channel back in early November. Uh, it is still too early to determine if magma will continue to accumulate under the Savart Singhi and whether the land will start to rise again. This is kind of a, uh, a deal where we have to watch as time goes by. We know the obviously the eruption is in place. Uh, what could further increase this is further magma flowing up from the area uh, to the surface regions above. Uh, and that could obviously kick things up even more drastically. Uh, while the eruption continues around this area, there is an increased likelihood that more vents may open along the original fissure as well as further north or south. Uh, looking back at the lead up to the eruption reveals that there were approximately 90 minutes between the first indicators and the start of the eruption. Uh, therefore, the time you know, for new vents opening uh, could be very short. Goodness. So... Uh, We'll continue to watch that even though there's a little pause you know in the amount of uh, vents that are opened up out there does not mean that this thing is over by a long shot uh, here's the last 12 hours of earthquake activity across iceland in general uh, shows about 41 earthquakes now over here across Grindavik area not really seeing any further indications of uh, uh you know larger scale movement taking place uh, if there's going to be new fissures opening up out here along that magma intrusion point, we would see increased increased earthquake activity like we've seen yesterday uh, in a big fashion. We also need to watch potentially for some further divergent boundary activity out here that uh, is creating all this volcanic activity, separation of the plate, so to speak. Um, we do have a little separate swarm going on down here south. Uh, if you remember, oh, a couple days ago, we seen a bunch of threes out here. Um, Let's see. Uh, yeah, there was quite a few threes stirring up out here. A little earthquake swarm. Remember that? Uh, it was well off um, the coast here of Iceland. Uh, but that had only been, I think, a, a couple days, maybe a few days prior to yesterday's eruption activity. So I think, if anything, we've seen a further influx of magma. Then that was enough to uh, pop the bubble, so to speak, here in this area. We'll continue to watch uh, this whole area. I mean, the divergent boundary zones are uh, uh, famous for some big-time volcano activity and magma, uh, you know, coming up from the uh, subsurface below. Uh, again, the latest 
live look here across the area shows uh i see kind of hard to tell on this at least two active vents here there of uh the lava spewing up beautiful i still i'm fascinated with it i could sit here and look at it all day i uh, was doing that a lot last night when this thing was really active but uh we'll continue to watch this see if anything uh breaks away from the main vent area in terms of maybe being closer to the uh, Grindavik region. All right, uh, what do we got for earthquake activity worldwide? Let's go ahead and check out uh, the last 24 hours. Not anything big going on. In fact, the last one, uh, the last five pointer there was from yesterday. So far today, we've seen a 4.9 down here in the New Caledonia region, uh, about 10 kilometers deep. Been getting uh, quite a bit of shallow earthquake movement here at the surface or at the plate boundary. Uh, we did see, it uh, looks like another deep earthquake this morning in the Tonga Trench. Uh, that has stirred up, obviously, some strain across this plate boundary like we're seeing uh, right now and uh, earlier this morning. Uh, but far as anything major going on yet, uh, really not seeing any super large increase in activity anywhere. Uh, a lot of this movement here from yesterday, still seeing some movement there around the Philippines. Uh, one earthquake up into the China area, 5.2 from yesterday. It's just a lot of yesterday stuff going on here. Let's see what we got here on the Earthquake 3D Globe. Uh, for any newer regions that might be showing some stuff. 3.3, pretty recent down here along the South Island area, along this plate boundary. Uh, the Kurokamachaka, Japan Trench area up here north. Pretty quiet for now. Uh, get a little bit of activity up here around the uh, Alaska and the Russia region here. Right in the middle of the two. That's going to be a 3.4 near Point Hope area. Well, that's well southwest of there, but uh, out there in the Bering Strait region. Uh, the rest of Alaska, generally small microquake activity. A look at uh, the west coast in California. Well, let's see if we got anything above the 2.5 level out here. Uh, not in California, but out in the Nevada area. Couple earthquakes here northeast of Reno, 3.4 in the Spanish Springs area, 2.7 coming in there as well. But there's uh, definitely a little bit of earthquake uptick here across this region, coming in about six kilometers deep or so. Uh, but the rest of uh, California out here generally quiet. One small earthquake on the uh, Garlock Fault shear zone near Tehachapi, 1.4. Aside from that, general microquake <clears throat> activity out here goodness every time i stand out in the rain i get these <laughs> i get these issues the following day i don't know what's in the rain but uh it used to be refreshing um see what else we got out here it's still refreshing i love the rain um yellowstone national park not a whole lot showing up but i do want to double check because we've seen swarms in the past with no indication there from the official sources so I'd like to stay update on, updated on what's going on out there. Not really see anything major going on. A couple handful of smaller quakes here across the area, but that is about it. Uh, the rest of the states, Oklahoma, Texas area, still seeing some movement out here. I did see a 3.4 outside of Pecos and the oil fields. This is the oil fields of Texas, and there's a lot of them, right? But this just seems to be the region that wants to get hit here recently. It uh, could have something to do with the uh, uh, the location of this oil field compared to others out here. Uh, but I think in, in time, uh, we'll see the further, um, further increasing uh, activity across the rest of these oil fields. No telling when, but uh, we'll definitely see it. Occasionally, we do see some elevated activity out here, just not as consistent as the Texas activity. That's quite a bit out there uh, in Texas. Uh, Puerto Rico area, one little earthquake, 4.0 from yesterday. Since then, things have died down, calmed down. Uh, just looks like a little break uh, in terms of any large-scale movement out here. Uh, there, there is a little bit of activity stirring up here across the Azores out in the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, close to, well, it's a divergent boundary here. Uh, so we'll watch the Atlantic here, this plate boundary, uh, just in case we see some further activity on the larger scale that could amplify some conditions up here, the volcanic conditions there across Iceland. All right, uh, weather outlook here today. Uh, and then we'll get to space weather. Uh, still shows some thunderstorm potential out here across the west coast. Uh, that is 
uh, a low pressure system that's spinning off the area. That's just thunderstorm activity, but nothing severe. Uh, a look at the satellite map here across the West Coast shows this cutoff low pressure system that brought me here, at least outside of Chico, three and a half inches of rain so far um, in the last, oh, has it been two days, three days? We, didn't, we haven't really seen too much rain today, so that's definitely from the last two days. Uh, that is going to tap into some further subtropical moisture here uh, that's just off the coast of Southern California, stretching way out here into the tropics. That uh, is going to amplify some wet conditions out here across Southern California um, over the next couple days. We'll continue to get further moisture out here in Northern California as well. Uh, a look at the rain accumulation here over the next couple days. Uh, does show some further wet weather up here in Northern California. So I could probably add another inch or two on top of the three and a half inches that I already got. That's a pretty significant amount of rain just for a short time period. Uh, Southern California down here, specifically right around Los Angeles, Santa Barbara area, expected to get some decent rainfall totals as well. You know, dump three to four inches of rain in a, in a day. That's, uh, that can spell some problems down there. So just a heads up. If you're in the Southern California area, uh, that is uh, expected to kick up here today and tomorrow and the next day. And as we put this model into motion here, you can see that low pressure system diving south here along the coast, uh, tapping into some of that subtropical moisture that will feed that low pressure and uh, create those wetter conditions there across Southern California. Uh, a weak low pressure system up here in the north, the Pacific Northwest, our next significant rainfall system looks to be around the 26 time frame, 27 time frame uh, of this month where another system will come in uh, to the California area. And it looks like that may be the pattern for the remainder of the year. Uh, and then more storms as we enter into 2024. So it looks like things are going to stay wet out here as forecasted here. Uh, for the um, the winter, El Nino kicking in and uh, kind of adding to some of the uh, the moisture content out here. All right, space weather activity. Well, there's a bunch of sunspots out here. Not a whole lot of uh, major flare activity, but uh, we're kind of getting up there a little bit uh, in the number count. Uh, unfortunately, some of these look like they have dissipated overnight. Still keeping my my eye here on this region. Uh, down here on the southern hemisphere of the of the sun southeastern quadrant a couple other newer sunspots coming around the bend uh, right now there's not a huge threat for some you know major flaring but there is uh, a couple regions to watch for some flaring in general 99 percent chance for a c flare m flare 25 percent chance x flare uh five percent chance 35 28 um looks to be the most complex there uh i think that's let's see here 35 28 is going to be this region let's see what it looks like today though well <laughs> yeah see how quick that died off 35 28 well that's going to be this region right here right yeah it looks like that's going to be the area um and that's the one i was kind of looking at this one here was complex yesterday but it looks like it's trying to split here and remain separate from the core um i'm still kind of watching this area down here this region looks like it's starting to grow a little bit with um, a little bit of complexity within that core so we'll continue to watch this as far as the aurora threat goes not a whole lot uh, in the next few days unless we get something major going on but uh things are toning down in that department we'll continue to watch uh, the activity in iceland and uh Everything else going on here. Hot Caves Hawaii, seeing a little bit of movement. Uh, let's go check that out real quick. Been uh, caught up in the Iceland activity. Forgot about uh, the Big Island. Not a whole lot of earthquake activity out here. Uh, and similar to what we've seen there in, in Iceland and, and previous volcanic eruptions here, uh, there'll be a, a significant earthquake swarm before then, just right up to it. Um, Let's go back and see what they're stating for the uh, informational statement here. This was put out today. Uh, the volcano is not erupting there on the big island of Hawaii. And it's, it's the same thing. 
Uh, let's go over and check out the deflation uh, activity that was going on here last couple days. See if things have kicked up at all in terms of the past trends here at Kilauea Volcano. Been oh, speaking of trends, it looks like we we're getting our uptick. So that's the last two days inflation going on here again at the Big Island, and that coincides with the previous. Uh, you know, I could go back here the previous uh, five or six levels of inflation here. There's always been a, at least a couple days. This last one here, uh, it was about maybe a little bit longer than our previous one here. This is deflation on the graph, inflation up here on the, on the graph. Um, and we're going up. Looks like that uh, may peak above the previous level that we just seen. Uh, and this previous level uh, is at its highest level of inflation in the last five years. Um, back, uh, remember the 2018 eruption, that was a little bit more uh, dramatic in terms of fissures opening up outside of the summit region. Uh, so we'll watch we'll watch this. I think it's going to go up with that sharp rise. We'll, we'll continue to go up for a few days uh, and then probably go back down. But... Uh, <laughs> It's going up and up and up. The question is, how much longer will it take uh, before we see any fissures open up out here across the Kilauea Volcano? A look at the Lava Lake area, where the last couple eruptions have been confined. Still shows volcanic gases. Uh, aside from that, uh, nothing of concern at all that I can see there across the area. And the rest of the seismograph stations, a little bit of activity in Southern Cal, some very small microquakes. Aside from that, hope everyone has a wonderful day. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later tonight. Got a little bit of sunshine uh, poking through the clouds right now, so I'm going to go outside, double check, make sure everything's uh, good yeah, before our next rain comes in later tonight and tomorrow. Have a good one. Stay safe out there.